It's a bright specimen you've given. The result can be printed off right there and then. What happens is you, you, you breathe into this machine and it gives, uh, it prints out two receipts. And what happens, in, what's supposed to happen in that case is that the, the guard is presented with these two pr pr receipts that are printed out. Uh, that guard signs both, gives them to you. You then sign in the place provided for you, both, and you must sign them. And then that's given back to, to the guard. And then the guard gives you one and he keeps one or she keeps one. That's what happens then. And in that case, then you'll be probably charged and uh, brought to court within two weeks or maybe the next day. But if you fail the breath test, you're brought to the local station and then uh, you're asked to either give us, a, you're brought to the, the intoxilizer room or the room where the intoxilizer machine is kept and then you're, you're, you're brought through the process of blowing into that machine to give what's known as two specimens of your breath. Um, sometimes the, the intoxilizer machine isn't working. In that case, then you, it, would, it reverts back to blood or urine where a doctor is then called. Uh, but in, if you fail a breath test, you'll be, you'll be arrested and brought to the station, yeah. For the guards to, to, to pull you over and, and get you to give a sample of saliva, you just had to be breaking the law. Now that's a very, it's, it's, it's a very wide ambit. The 2010 Act allows them to demand a saliva sample from anyone who's breaking the law. You don't, uh, you don't have to, all you have to do is, is, is in, you know, create some breach of the law in some way. I've had people who've been not using their indicators coming out of a petrol station as a pretext to stop them and demand a saliva sample. And then they give a saliva sample and if it shows up, they're being arrested. Uh, that's any little, any little infraction at all is enough to justify a stop. And in some cases, it's, I think it's quite unfair, to be honest. And what happens then after that? Like, will I stay in, in the guard station all night? Or? No, no, no. Uh, unless, you're, you, unless you're really intoxicated, and that's rarely the case, you'd be kept there. Uh, they can't release you if you're a danger to yourself or to the public. So you could, be, you, could be a, you could be very, very badly drunk, and you could go through the process of giving a blood or urine or breath specimen, but if the member in charge in the station has uh, a fear, a legitimate fear that you might be a danger to yourself or other people if you were, if you were let out, they have to keep you there until you sober up. Um, that, that doesn't often happen. In, in most cases, people are released straight away after they've given the specimen. 